Welcome to the Photo Mochi Review, Episode 3. I'm your host, Bilal Khan. And I'm your co-host, Daniel Hawkinson. And today we're reviewing the DJI Ronin RS4 Pro. This has a lot of new features compared to the RS3 Pro. Uh, one big one is that with the Pro Combo, you get the LiDAR scanner. Mm -hmm. uh, that's worth mentioning because now you have focus mapping and all this extra stuff you could do with the Sony cameras and you know having a great partnership between camera operation as well as control operation within the gimbal yeah. is really, really cool. You can connect to DJI's uh, radio transmission system directly from the gimbal to your HD systems. Mm -hmm. And uh, DJI makes a wireless transmitter system as well. And everything's in-house. So it's really cool how you can do all this even without the grip. So you can go handheld or mounted as well as the fact that you can now calibrate this gimbal for car mounts, RS3 couldn't do that. Without the arm, uh, there's basically a new joystick control switch. So basically you have the normal control for your joysticks for movement and stuff, but then if you switch it up, you have your zoom in and out, as well as having a dial in the back that you can set and preset for zoom or focus. So you have a focus one in the back end for your joystick control to be different too. Mm -hmm. So really cool feature there. RS4 has uh, carbon fiber arms now. They're longer arms as well, so you can still handle that. Uh, 10 pound payload, but you also get Teflon coated arms, which is a uh, more smoother sort of balancing. Mm -hmm. So overall it's like really, really nice upgrades that are yeah. actually really useful in the real world scenarios. So. Yeah, oftentimes you get like better specs, but that comes with some weight. Mm -hmm. These like, they manage to up the specs, but lower the weight, which is really impressive, I think. I think what's really impressive is this uh, new native vertical uh, grip or basically a new vertical mounting system. So, I mean, if you guys see, I just unscrewed it from the back and, you know, squeezed in. So this little mechanism comes off and now your rail literally is a native vertical mount. So you don't need to go and buy a cage now mm. that you can vertically mount this yes. and it still works with almost all the cameras. So still a great, great feature. Yeah. And like when we try this, it was very like easy to rebalance it as well. Like if yeah. you compare this to like a cage, it saves yeah. so much time if you do a lot of horizontal and vertical shooting. Yeah, all the, constantly. Yeah. I, I would have to agree the same. Yeah. Um, another cool thing about this is that the RSS uh, port is in the back rather than in the front. So now you have a cable management system where you can take it from here and put it here without putting so much stress mm. and stretch on the cable. Sometimes yeah. we've bent those multi cables yeah. because of you know, having wide setups. Very annoying. Them. It's like, that's a bottleneck before, but now they fixed that. Yeah, literally. And it's really cool for cable management. Um, really cool. You know, it seems like a battle ax. So really, really nice. Let's go ahead and talk about this box that it comes in. It's a carrying case. Yep. This is how you're actually going to get it. This box and this fits inside this and you get all these accessories with it. So it's really, really cool. The main accessories that you're going to go ahead and get with the normal RS4 Pro uh, and not the pro combo is what you see here. So you're going to go ahead and get the, the briefcase mode handle mm -hmm. basically so that whenever you're going down low, you're ready to go. Yeah. Get your screw set right here. We have a screw and man photo plate on top. Basically this is a lens support system. So it keeps the lens up. So that way the lens never drops and your balancing never goes off. That's good for safety. Yeah. yeah. You don't want your lens just hanging out there. Or just you know, topping down mm -hmm. or something like that. You get a spare one of these supports in the back basically to extend and hold your camera more securely, which is cool that they added that. You also get, um, this is a charging cable, which is USB-C to USB. And then this is your uh, connection cable from your camera to here. When you're doing PC remote function on your Sony cameras, uh, the multi cable gives you different functionality than your USB-C cable does. So it's really just up to your discretion of what you want to do. Yep. You just get a bunch of these paddings and you get um, a zip pouch little area for yourself and you get the gimbal to go right there and you can just unmount it or unfold it and everything kind of just fits flush. Very portable. Very. I mean, if you can just carry this in a carrying case and, and if you're like really, really fast with your assembly, disassembly mm -hmm. and just con configurations and I think it's a great choice. Yeah. So Bilal, what's the max capacity and weight you can carry on this thing? 10 pounds. So if you have a mic on top mm -hmm. or if you have any sort of cables coming in and out of that and you have a Raven Eye system and all that, it's kind of nice to be able to carry that much weight and yep. have all that balance out well because if you're not able to balance it, then it sucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Bilal, what would you say are the like the main differences between the RS4 and the RS3 Pro? 
carbon fiber arms, Teflon coated arms, yep. and the fact that it has a 20% increase in torque. So mm -hmm. the motor torque, when you're going this way and you're doing your orbits and yep. doing all that, it's more smooth as a uniform piece. And the cool thing about this now is that this is a generation two locking system. So mm -hmm. these have now been um, upgraded, yep. basically improved and really nice. And the cool thing about this is that you can actually tighten and loosen the amount of tightness on these oh. bolts. So look, like you can take it out and you can keep it looser so it's easier to move it. I see. Or, you know, you can move it here or back here, tighten it, and then bring it back, go all the way back here, and just keep it tight. Oh. So you can keep it as, you can choose your preference with this thing. That's cool. You know, really, really neat features. And it works on all of these. Oh. So, oh, except for this one. Yeah. But yeah. So really, really neat, really, really cool. Good. Chris. Use Chris. my reaction for that. Uh, I, actually, I actually didn't <laughs> That's know that. That's a genuine that. reaction. Yeah, I actually yeah. didn't know that. That's cool. And, uh, so what I have currently is a 24 to 105 f4 G OSS lens. Um, another thing that I have with this is a 7C2 itself, and uh, you know, a battery's in there. So this is probably like seven pounds by itself, mm. all put together. And what I'm going to do now is I'll walk through the process of showing you guys how to mount a normal camera. The details on this, oh my God, if I were to explain details, I could go on and on and on about details. No. But, you know. We just don't have that time today. For another do we, podcast. do we, do we ever? <laughs> yeah. All right, let's do this. We're gonna put it, try and put it behind the focus ring, but you know, even if you can't, it's okay. So then once you tighten it down, we're good here. What we'll end up doing is using the USB-C to USB-C connection that's actually brought part of it. So now you just plug it in here for PC remote. All right, let's go ahead and now that the camera's mounted, let's go ahead and start balancing it. We've went ahead and released it from its lock and you can see that it's gonna move on its own if I'm not careful. So horizontally mounting it, we're good right there. And another thing is now we have to mount this plate over here. And the cool thing is there's a tab we should show the viewers this tab as soon as this, oh, okay, there we go. And so, all right, viewers. So here's what you need to do when you're balancing a gimbal is that it needs to mount up right here and line up here. And now that it's not lining up there, it needs to, because you see that movement, all of that backspace is coming from here. So we're just gonna move this forward enough to where it just stays still and this locks in it's super smooth with this locking i love it so now it stays it stays stays doesn't want to stay mainly because if we're here uh, and i've had it positioned there but you just want to line this with this so this top end and this top end right here these two top ends need to line up in order for it to balance on this axis properly so Go ahead and turn it on. And you have a longer wait time. But cool thing now is that just like I was talking about before, there is a auto tune. And in auto tune, you have car mount and handheld. So I chose handheld and it's gonna start the calibration. So it's gonna do its little dance. Okay, and now we're good to go and it's mounted and ready to go outside and right now it's in orbit mode. So when we go here, you can see how it's moving in a more uniform factor. And this is what's the most important about this is that this is a difference with the RS3 is that you don't feel like when you're going here that it's one step after the other. It feels like it's one step all together, yep. not after the other. All right, so we're outside and we're gonna go ahead and start talking about all the nice features that this RS4 Pro has. We've got Daniel here and we're gonna make a cool little video and showing you guys different movements and what you can do with the RS4 Pro. And let's go ahead and get right into it. So. First thing that I'm gonna do is uh, I'm already in pan follow. There's three different modes. It has pan tilt follow, pan follow, and uh, first person view. So it lets you do multiple things. So for example, if I'm in pan tilt follow, now I can tilt down, tilt up, you know, I can be all over the place. But pan follow keeps this straight and cinematic so I can get B-roll whenever I need to. 
This is a great length. I'm at 50 millimeters. My exposure is already set up. 6.3 f-stop, 1800 since it's so, so bright outside. ISO 125. So I'm going to go ahead and keep it right here. And what I like to do is I like to be like this. And I like to walk on this side in case I need to orbit. But let's go ahead and go. All right, yeah. three, two, one. Let's go. And I'm just going super slow, keeping it straight as possible, working well. That was easy, right? That was easy. Everyone can do that. Okay, now we're gonna like do it. Parallax or something? Or? No, okay. I want you vertical uh -huh. of me running. Vertical of you running yes. right now? Okay, cool, cool little feature that you're asking for. Let's go ahead and do it then. First things first, we're gonna go ahead and lock it. Let's set this down. Now that we set it down, we're gonna go ahead and release it from this side, unscrew it, and then we've loosened up the screw, kept that there, and go ahead and squeeze this together, mount it. Once it's mounted, then we go ahead and screw it back together. Okay, okay. so I'm just gonna run this way and you're just gonna to try to capture me smooth. Smooth, okay. Yes. Super smooth, let's go. Let's see. <laughs> really good, really good. Uh, the only difference with that is the camera operator staying just in line with you, uh, but the gimbal does not really do much of this. It stays yeah, no. like this as much as it can, even though it has this yeah. happening. So even with that shake, it tries its best not to in the frame, nice. which is really cool because Sony cameras that are hybrid, that have both photo and video capabilities, they have more of a jelloing effect which needs to be mitigated with stabilizers. Let's see how well you could do if I uh -oh. start, start going faster. What's gonna happen now? We hop in and Yeah, this handle is so well. Like yeah. all the fine adjustments I do, it's just... Sick. So you're doing fine up. adjustments and handling everything then? Yeah. Okay, great. No problem whatsoever. I think Daniel here did a great presentation to show us how cool smooth tracking can really be. Yeah, it's so easy. Like using it for the, almost the first time, you know exactly where your movements can be and how you can do them very easily. I agree. And the biggest thing for me is, again, the 20% increase in torque, keeping yeah. it as a unified unit. Welcome back to the studio. I had a really good time testing this thing out in real life scenarios, and I can't wait to do it more in the future. So we'll catch you on the next one.